Welcome, my name is Agle. I work as a software engineer for IBM Z Monitoring Configuration Manager, and today I'm going to demo Configuration Manager's action called Delete. After watching the video, you will understand how to clean up your existing runtime environments. Let's build a delete job from scratch. Configuration Manager ships a sample job in SMPE's target library called TCANSAM. The sample can be found by searching KFJJ MCM keyword. I will now customize the job card. I will give the job a meaningful name and will get rid of the notify so it doesn't interrupt us too much. In non-sandbox environments, you might want to make a copy of the sample and then edit it outside of the SMP. But for the sake of a demo, I'm just opening it in a view mode. The template lists brief instructions. You are expected to change the placeholder values denoted with angle brackets. I will change the system where the job is executed and will also copy the high-level qualifier for target libraries. KCI Omega program will execute from the load module library referred to as a step lab and config manager workflows are run from the DD named KCI flow. It needs to point to a TCAN COS library. I'm just manually changing the values as there are only two of them, but you can use a change all command as well. I no longer need this comment section, so I'm going to delete the block and reclaim some space so you could see the job easier. We are now required to update KCI vars with the parameters relevant for the delete action. KCI vars is the main interface for configuration manager, so here we need to choose the action from the given list. It's going to be delete, and I'm also removing the irrelevant parameter lines from the job. Now we must tell the job where to look for the RT definition. Delete works by going into specified RT def where it looks for certain members. So I have an example here. It's an RT that has just been pre-generated. I will copy the dataset name without the low level qualifier. Then I replace the placeholder with the copied value in RT blib high left field. Now we need an RT name. So let's go back to the RT def and copy the RT name that we want to delete. The member is called RT1, which I will use in the job template. So now the template is ready to go. Confirm is the last parameter you have to review. Uh, we suggest running the job with the value set to N as shown in the default, because then the delete will run in a preview mode and won't actually delete any data sets. So let's submit the job. The job output appears in SDSF and you have to browse it using a question mark. There is a DD name where all the meaningful messages are printed called KCI print, which I will now read. The report can be found near the top of KCI print. The listing that you see should now be reviewed carefully because after rerunning the delete job with confirm set to yes, those exact data sets will be gone. Notice that the list contains not only of the values equal to RTE PLIB high level that I just set in the job, but also other high level qualifiers. To find out how delete picks those datasets, we must go into our RT def and browse a few members. So first is the RT name member. The filter that delete builds contains RTE PLIB high level plus an RT name, and it also considers optional parameters. You can have them for vSAM files, persistent datasets version 1 and 2, and so on. We support a few more customizations in the delete action. One is for Omegamon for DB2. It has a couple of parameters you can specify for the location of data collection. And most of these will also be deleted, minus a few exceptions, generation data groups, for example. Another type of data sets to be deleted is for Omegamon for IMS agent. The HLQ will be combined of two log stream related parameters. Now I will explain how embeds library is handled by the delete action. If we go back to the RT name member, I had the embeds library parameter commented out on purpose. You see that the value of the embeds library matches the pattern that gets deleted. And this is a default value if you don't override it. So to avoid it, you should have this library explicitly set an RT name member. Now let's look at the produce report again. Embeds is among those datasets listed. I want to make an exception for embeds and keep them. So I'm going to resubmit the delete job to recreate the report. 
as now I have the embed parameter uncommented. We can read the delete report again, and it shows that we successfully added an exception for the embeds library. Now let's do a normal run of the delete by changing the confirm no to yes. I'll go to DS list screen to list the full set of RTE datasets that I have in this runtime environment to show which ones will be deleted and which ones will be kept. Let's submit the job. So no way back from this point. Once the job is complete, expected result is return code zero. Let's list our RTE datasets. So not much left here. It's normal that you still have enhanced 30 to 70 UI integration datasets, proc lab and Vita members, as well as the original RTE dev. I also made an RTE dev backup manually and it did not fall under the delete mask because it doesn't have an RT name mid-level qualifier. But this mid-level qualifier equal to RT name doesn't get added to all of the available HLQ parameters. So it's important you review the report before executing the normal delete run. Please visit Omegamon's shared documentation for the full list of datasets kept during the delete run, which might not have been part of this example. Now let's move on to the slightly advanced delete feature, remote configuration delete. Here on the screen, you see an RTE dev library, which was created as a local definition in the remote configuration scenario. So the difference from the previously seen RTE definition is that it has a new member called PCK dollar parm. PCK stands for package. Let's look at the RTE name member to see what RTE plib high level is set to. So let's have that value in mind. Now I'll browse the package member to read what parameters we have here. In the remote deployment scenario, all of your local RT datasets will be created under KFG local parameter values. I didn't specify all of them here, but you have an option to do so. Delete will take them as the mask as well. Let's list the full set of datasets that have been generated for this RTE. We expect to see at least two different high-level qualifiers as seen in the KFJ local parameters found in our package bar member. So in the remote deployment scenario, you would package them all together in a few package files, transfer them to the remote system, deploy them there, test the runtime environments by starting the agents, and after all of that is complete, it would make sense to immediately delete the local RT copies. There is one important change you must make in order to tell the delete to delete the local RTE and not the one we saw in RTE PLIB high left parameter. In order to run the job successfully, you still need to specify it in the job, but it will not match the mask for the actual delete. This important change is to add an additional parameter in KCI vars, which is KFJ local PLIB high left. Now what the job will do is go to the local plib high left denoted RT dev and look for a package par member. It will ignore the remote qualifier completely. After having set the confirm to no again, we submit the job. In the remote scenario, nothing changes for the report itself. The report will only list the local datasets. You should not see any matches for your remote plib high left value. If you set the delete to run normally again by changing the confirm to yes, the same list of reported datasets will be deleted. Then you might wonder, how would you delete the remote copies of the RTE datasets that you have sent to the remote system? Do you need to refer to local parameters anywhere? Actually, this job uh, would not be any different from the first example we've seen it's just the delete should execute on the remote system. You'd be on a different plex and you might have a different system name there as well. And then the RTE plib high level would have to match the deployed dataset HLQs. If you had any customizations defined in this RTE dev, they would be picked up normally. Finally, I will say a few words about confirm parameter. So if you ever forget to specify it at all, which might happen if you reuse the same template for different actions, or you might just miss it completely, 
the confirm default value is set to no, so it is nearly impossible to accidentally run it with the value of yes and delete your RTE unintentionally. I hope you found this video useful. Make sure to check out other Omegamon demos on this channel. Thank you and see you next time.